Hello and welcome to the Compensate Podcast. I'm of course your host, Raffi. And here with me today, my uh, my co-hosts are the all-new Ben. Hey. And the incredible Paul. Hey, yo. We're back, guys. And it's it's a new year of new books that I have read, that I have here with me physically. And uh, today we're talking about Electra from uh, 2014, written by... Hold on, I wrote this down. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Uh, Hayden Blackman. Oh, you got notes. And it's uh, art by Michael Del Mundo. That's a bad name. What, yeah. Del Mundo? Del Mundo. That's, That's a cool name. Dude. Del what, Mundo. What was his first name? Michael. Oh, very boring. I thought it was Armando for some reason. <laughs> Armando, Armando Del, Del Mundo. Mundo. You should change oh your name, God. buddy. That kind of floats. Yeah, okay. That's a good fake name right there. <laughs> fake name. Your real name. <laughs> your real name. <laughs> change my name right now. I like that. So, yeah. This came out in, like, uh, 2014 into 2015. Uh, I was reading it at the time. Now, Electra. Okay. Paul, you've never heard of Elektra. Absolutely not. You, Bennett, you know about Elektra. I... Is she a Marvel character or DC? She's a Marvel character. Okay, that's... <laughs> so, Elektra is a character from the Daredevil comics. Okay. Well, um, she's, she's not in Fortnite, so of course you don't know who she is. Well, maybe they'll bring her soon. Maybe. They put on all the spider... They just put Moon Knight in there, so like... They did. They're gonna yeah. get to Elektra eventually. I think she was invented by Frank Miller, who did a bunch of bad Batman books. Um, but Elektra was good. And her thing, because it kind of begins and ends with this, Electra's had a weird history. And it's funny because I don't think in the entire, like, nine years I've been podcasting, I've ever talked about Electra at all. The closest is that I think we did a commentary of the Daredevil movie with Ben Affleck, and Electra is in that. In fact, okay, so this is a funny fact, all right? So there's a really crappy Daredevil movie with Ben Affleck back in, like, 2003 or four, and Electra was played by Jennifer Gardner, I think. <laughs> and for some reason, they gave her a movie spinoff. Like they gave, really? they had an Electra movie, and it was kind of like their version of like DC's Catwoman movie with Halle Berry, because it was so bad that a- anyone working in Hollywood, if you went to them with a superhero movie pitch about a woman, they would bring up Catwoman and Electra as examples as to why we don't make movies about women. <laughs> That's how bad those two movies were. And then were. what? And fucking, it took them like. 30 more years, or 20 years, just to get to, like, Wonder Woman Wonder shit, Woman, where that was decent. Captain Marvel, and then Black Widow, yeah. She's introduced in the Daredevil comics. She's someone that used to know Matt Murdock, who... Somebody that dreams. <laughs> had, a, had a similar, like, assassin background. But basically, she's an assassin, but she loves Matt Murdock, about if she wants to continue being a hired killer, or if she wants to... Because she thinks that Daredevil killed her father, because the, <laughs> the Kingpin made her think that... That Daredevil did it, and then Kingpin rubs his greasy hands together like, yes, it's all coming together. And then he eats a, a bite of ham, because he's a fat... Um. Ham! <laughs> <laughs> is there a version of Kingpin with hair? No, that's why every version of him is evil. Oh, great. <laughs> Just like Lex Luthor. <laughs> Except there are Lex Luthors that have hair. Yeah, but then they lose it. <laughs> but he's also sometimes a hero, so I think that magic... I think, you know, it all adds up. Yeah. Anyway, Elektra is a villain for a while, and then she's trying to decide, like, oh... Matt Murdock being a cool so assassin. She, she's like Marvel's Catwoman. Yeah, a little bit. The only difference is uh, Elektra's stabbed through the heart by Bullseye. Okay. Yeah. She's trying to make this decision, and then Bullseye, who's a Daredevil villain, is like, Hi, yeah. She's not a human, is she? She's human. Oh. Just raw human, not like a... Well... <laughs> not a cat? No, not a cat. Right. She's not electric or something? She's not electric. I don't know. The thing is... Okay. she got red hair. Ele- no... Oh, she's a redhead. No, she's not a redhead. No, the picture's deceiving. I know she's Greek. <laughs> Bullshit. What? <laughs> oh God. No, no. Okay, so that's the. Her name's Electra, right? That is her her given birth name. Oh really? Her oh. full name is Electra Nachios. Oh, Armando, <laughs> you got some competition, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, so she shows up. Assassin is killed by Bullseye. Comes back. Look how Dardo was like. Uh, how are you back? I yeah, don't, I'm wondering as well. What's going this on? ninja clan called the Hand, which are always fighting Daredevil, because Frank Miller loved ninjas. So there's the Hand, as anyone would. as everyone does. They're little amongst us. We just don't see them. <laughs> and the Hand was like, "Oh, cool, she's dead. Let's revive her." And so they revive her. <laughs> but their reviving ritual process also makes her like a slave for them. Okay. That's racist. Yeah. It's what? <laughs> <laughs> so she works for them until she doesn't. And then the hand is like, Duh. we just want Electra back, but she keeps making out with Daredevil. So here's she what we're going to... 
she works for them until she doesn't? Yeah, she just breaks, like, she breaks the mind control. One day she's just like, oh my god, I'm normal. I choose love. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> Man. She what? breaks through it and she's free or whatever. But then the hand is like, uh, that's fine. We'll just kill you again and we'll revive you again. And this time when they do it, she's split into two people. So there's two Electras. So there's Electra and then there's her evil half. Eris. Why is there always got to be an evil? Yeah, why is there always why can't they just both twin. be good? Who's that person that broke up into millions of people? Oh, oh, multiple men. Multiple men. It's a multiple <laughs> woman now. <laughs> there's just two of her. And then I think Eris dies at some point. By that point, it was the 90s and they didn't know what they were doing. Daredevil had power armor and shit. It was weird. <laughs> anyway, the point of Electra is that she has a past full of death, murder, and like a lost opportunity at love. Right? This book came out. Doesn't seem like she has a lot going for her. No, which is why when this book came out, everyone was like, okay, but why though? <laughs> well, when this came out, again, this comes out, it's 2014, I'm reading comic books, why do I pick this up? I would not, yes. Yeah. Okay, so every... Sell it to me. Every comic that we've had on the comic buffet this year has been on for a reason. Like, we did She-Hulk because it was smart, it was witty, and I thought it was just an intelligent, interesting book. Mm-hmm. We did Martian Manhunter because I love pain and putting myself and other people through pain, and, and that book was terrible. <laughs> okay. We did Silk because I thought Silk was a really cool new character that they don't really do anything with. This, this is the only book among, like, this year's, you know, worth of books. I picked this just for the art. Oh, wow. Look at so that. Paul and I are going to leave today happy. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of confused and <laughs> confused and angry. <laughs> not knowing what we're mad at or Yeah. Why. Not knowing what the fuck Ravage is. Yeah, no one's gonna be upset about anything. Why there's a weird fucking grasshopper man. Huh. Yeah, this art by Armando Del Mundo. God damn right, <laughs> Armando. Uh it's just it's awesome. I think I've seen a little bit of his art before, but in this book it's just spectacular. It's really the only reason I picked the book up. Because the plot itself is pretty simple. Okay, so there's this character, because Electra is just a, an assassin for hire. That's why it's simple. Because the book starts out and she's just looking for the next hit, right? And she meets this character called the Matchmaker, who I don't, I've never seen this character before. She, uh, she looks like Mary Poppins or something. And Electra's new target is called uh, Cape Crow. <laughs> Cape Crow is just... Thank you for the sound effect. This badass <laughs> assassin who we've never heard of before. Um... He's so badass that he puts other assassins to rest with how good he is at being a badass. In these panels, you can see he be- he beat Sabretooth from uh, the X-Men comics. Okay. And he beat Bullseye from this comic. And he beat Taskmaster from that Black Widow movie. <laughs> so he's just, he's just kicking everyone's asses. Um, I've never heard of any of those people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you lost me. <laughs> What is a saber? He's still stuck on the Spider-Man head. <laughs> Cape Crow is this master assassin who is really old. He's like, he's like a veteran assassin. Oh, he's retired. More not long. not retired, but like he. He's been doing it a while. He's been doing it for such a long time. He's got like the biggest hit on his head. Oh. Like Electra asked for like the biggest hit that the Assassin's Guild has, and it's this guy Cape Crow who we've never heard about. So I mean, how big of a deal? He must be good at his job. Cause I've never heard of him. Must um, be. <laughs> so that's how you know you're good at your job when no one's even heard of you. Yeah. But you the know. problem is, that, like, again, all these other assassins are trying to get Cape Crow, and there's one of them that Electra hasn't met yet that we meet in this book. This is the other reason I wanted to do this book. This is a new character invented for this book. I don't think we see him ever again outside of this series. His name is Bloody Lips. Okay. What? <laughs> and you lost me. <laughs> Bloody Lips. There he is. He is an, uh, an Australian assassin. But Bloody Lips, again, he just looks really great in this this art style. His deal, we learn later on, is that like he was just a regular Australian dude, right? And then he heard the voice of the serpent, and so he had to kill his family. Oh. Um, what? And uh, he, the serpent tells him to like go and kill strong people. And uh, he, they don't confirm if he's like a mutant or a metahuman or what. His deal is that he can copy your powers. Or just anything you're good at. Kind of like Rogue. Like, if, if, if he, you know, he can take, I don't know, who's a person with powers? Anybody. So if you're, like, a really, if you're really good at, like, drawing, you can... Yeah, that too. Okay. Like, it's not just, like, 
Like, he can take laser eyes from Cyclops or whatever, but he can also just, like, take your ability to, like, juggle real good. Or, like, have... be able to do math. Yeah, or, like, if you know specific sensitive information, he'll know that. He, he's a good accountant. He's a good <laughs> accountant, guys. Yes. But, so, the way he gets his powers... Okay, hold on. There's, there's no really cutting around this. He gets his powers by eating from other things. So if he wants, like, I don't know, Wolverine's powers, he has to eat a piece of Wolverine. Okay. Yeah. And when we meet him... Odd choice. <laughs> odd choice. I'm still here, though. I'm still with it. He just starts fighting someone. Can I just eat you really I just quickly? need a nibble. Just take a yeah. quick just a little slice. A piece of your hair, maybe. That should do <laughs> Can I eat your hair? <laughs> don't just make it shave weird. off the dead skin. <laughs> you don't need it. Just follows you around to like you sweat a little bit. You see one drop. Is like those weird guys that like try to buy your socks and shit. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, no! Um, so we see him going to this like Shield military base in the middle of the, uh, the swamp and just killing some Shield dudes. Why is Shield like the most fucking? It's supposed to be like the one of the most powerful things ever. But like every comic or every story you hear about Shield, they're always getting fucked. Listen, the <laughs> job market is shitty right now, and everyone needs a well, job. You think people are like, "Ooh, do I join Shield or the FBI?" They're like, yeah. Well, I mean, if you join Shield, it's way more. Well, you get paid it, more, but your risk of dying. I was gonna say, is it more in the Marvel universe? Is it more likely you'll die as a Shield agent or as a civilian? Probably a fucking Shield agent. <laughs> yeah, you'd get involved more. Yeah. Um, dealing with Avengers shit. Yeah, so he breaks into this military base, he fights the S.H.I.E.L.D. dude, and then he, like, I think he eats his throat, and he does that to get the information, like, the code needed to get inside the base. Okay. And inside the base... Oh, God. Is, bull- is Electra? No, it's Bullseye. Bullseye! Yeah. Alive? Yes. Okay, so Bullseye is, again, another Daredevil character. He is another Hitman character. He's very mysterious, but he's got the power of perfect accuracy. So Makes he can, sense. Yeah, like he can use whatever to kill you. Uh, I think in the Daredevil TV show, they're fighting in an office building, and Daredevil's like ducking behind something, and, and Bullseye ricochets a stapler off the wall, and it hits Daredevil in the head. Oh, God. Yeah, he just always hits his target, and no one really knows how he can do it. But at this Aim point... Hacks. <laughs> Aim hacks. He's got a game... Wall hacking. <laughs> he's got the game shark in yeah. yeah. So, Bullseye at this point is like uh, a vegetable. Not literally. I mean, like, he, his body functions are like all down. Like, they keep him in a, in a freaking sarcophagus for some reason. He's like all wrapped up like a mummy. And, <laughs> Bull, what is it? Bloody Lips goes in there. It's such a bad name. Bloody Lips? Bloody Lips. Nah, bloody Lips. They don't even have bloody looking. Because he eats things, I guess. He eats people. Well, not like... I thought he cut his lips. I, that, that's what, before you said he... he's like really chapped lips. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just see who's chapstick. No, it's my name. It's my name. <laughs> the way you beat him is just you hold him down, and just put on the chapstick. For <laughs> no, my power. <laughs> <laughs> so he goes here, opens the tomb. Bullseye's like, "Who's there? Who, who are you doing?" And Bloody Lips is like, "Hey, hey, it's cool. Just I just, you. I just need to bite you. I just need a little piece. Just a little nibble. I just need a nibble so I can get your cool accuracy powers. And yeah, and also he, yeah, he does it for the accuracy powers. When we go back to Electra, she's like skydiving to like Monster Island or something to find Cape Crow. Monster Island is where all the monsters live. Makes and, sense. Uh, yeah, I like in, it. In great, Monsters, great. Yeah. Yeah. How many, how many books were there for this?" This was a 12-issue run. Holy shit. And that's it? They didn't do anything else with her? No. I mean, okay. I was going to mention this way later, but she has been getting a lot to do recently. Uh, no, so in the recent comics, Daredevil has gone to jail, and Elektra, who, you know, loves Daredevil, takes over. She becomes Daredevil in New York. And it's a pretty dope-looking costume, to be honest with you. Uh, anyway, in this book... Uh, so Elektra and Matchmaker go to this monster island looking for Cape Crow. So, when we get back to, like, you know, the hunt for Cape Crow, we check in on Scalp Hunter and Lady Bullseye. Okay. Lady Bullseye was someone who was in the human trafficking circuit, and her, I guess, enslavers or something, were killed by Bullseye. Not because Bullseye was doing the right thing, but because, you know, he was working for, like, a counter gang internet like uh organization but lady bullseye was like convinced that bullseye was a hero and so she modeled herself after bullseye that's awkward yeah no it's it's <laughs> not it's not a good place to put your uh, loyalties but she's teaming up with scalp hunter who 
Uh, they changed his name recently because he's Native American and his name is Scalp Hunter. Yeah, I can see what the issue is with that. Yeah, so, but, uh, yeah they're looking for Cape Crow, and Crow leaves these like adorable bird-shaped explosives behind. Um, and, and I think they're, these two are like the last ones who are hunting Cape Crow because he's already beaten everybody else. But Electra shows up to fight off um, uh, Scalp Hunter and uh, Lady Bullseye. And it's funny because... Electra's rude. She's like, she's like, I don't give a shit about you, Scalp Hunter. You're lame. You suck. I know Lady Bullseye is going to be a problem, though. Like, I think when she shows up, she's like, I'm here to take you down. And Scalp Hunter's like, you think you can take me down? And Electra's I was like, talking to Lady I, Bullseye. I was talking to the, yeah, I was talking to Lady Bullseye. <laughs> Were you? Scalp Hunter? That's fucked up. Anyway, I, mean, <laughs> um, I wanted to point this out because I didn't notice until I reread it. Scalp Hunter's gun goes YOLO. Look at the sound effect they do for the gun. YOLO. <laughs> so that's how you if you didn't suck enough already oh yes what a gun sounds like his gun shouts <laughs> YOLO Yo, maybe it's supposed to be like a laser gun I don't know but uh their fighting interrupts the natural habitat of this mole monster and the mom is like rah and the kids are like also us rah but what happens when new monsters arrive they have to fucking fight the mole I, I think they just become part like the monsters are like animals if you don't fuck with them, they won't fuck with is you. Is he like the TSA of Monster Island? No, he's just an angry ass mole. Okay. There's probably more than that. Yeah, more probably. Things. I mean, it's got babies, so like there has to be more of it. Gross. Oh, but like, Electra is trying to fight Lady Bullseye as Scalp Hunter is trying to survive being attacked by this giant mole monster. I think Scalp Hunter dies. I sure. I hope mean, a fucking giant mole monster. I, <laughs> I sure hope he did. I think he did. Uh, yeah, we can just pretend he doesn't exist. Yeah, who, who the fuck is Scalp Hunter anyway? <laughs> um, but Electra beats Lady da uh, Bullseye. Uh, she doesn't kill her. Now, the reason Lady Bullseye and, and Scalp Hunter were here in like the Mole's territory is because they were catching up to Cape Crow, who they like managed to stun earlier off-panel. And when Electra finds Cape Crow, he's like really fucked up and beaten. And she's like, you're not Cape Crow. Cape Crow wouldn't let himself like get to this point where he's like weak and stuff. And... It turns out not to be Cape Crow. Well, it's some dude wearing his armor, and it's his son, Kento. You know, oh where the first Pokemon games take place, Kento. <laughs> um, but yeah, Electra takes... Cause, okay, Kento is the one that put up the hit for Cape Crow, his own father. He wants to kill his dad? No, he just wants his dad to come home. He's like, my dad's always... What a fucking sad story that <laughs> is. <laughs> my dad's always doing this these hit jobs... And I just wanted to, he's old. I just wanted to come home before he gets himself killed. Electra meets back up with Matchmaker, and it's like, it's like a, she keeps adding characters to her little party, because, like, she has Kento now, and she meets back up with Matchmaker. Um, we check in, like, before this issue ends, we check in on Bloody Lips, who, like, <laughs> he ate Scalp Hunter. Not completely, he just ate parts of him. Yeah, yeah. So he gets, Scalp Hunter had a healing factor. So Scalp Hunter can now... Or not Scalp Hunter. Bloody Lips can heal now. Huh. He heal real good. And he's also... Like, he left Lady Bullseye alive. Because he's planning on, like, eating parts of her every now and again to get her, like, <laughs> her skills. Okay, dude. <laughs> I'm gonna eat so your, weird. I'm gonna eat your <laughs> real I'll come back to you later. <laughs> You're my, my snack for the road. Yeah, no. Like, no one says this guy... Dude, you're fucking gross, dude. <laughs> you're, you're disgusting. Yeah, you're a fucking weirdo. weirdo. <laughs> um... So Kento is like, I think I know where my dad is hiding. In the sunken city of Babylon. So, okay. <laughs> they go to the sunken city of Babylon, where I guess uh, Kento's mother was like a Babylonian uh, descendant. So she's some sort of royalty, which is why they have access to the sunken city. And it's one of those things where the sunken city has air pockets and shit. Okay. Yeah. Now... Part of Bloody Lips' side... St I think Bloody Lips has this Is that a story. baseball player? Yes. Okay, because here's the thing. So when Bloody Lips eats a part of Bullseye, the regular Bullseye, not the lady one, to get his powers, he also gets some of Bullseye's memories. So he remembers, like, fighting the X-Men for some reason, uh, fighting Daredevil here and there. He remembers killing Karen Page, because Bullseye is the one that kills Karen Page. Um... And also, the only thing we know about Bullseye's past is that he played baseball when he was a kid. Huh. Hmm. Also, his first name is Lester, which is... Oh, kind of, Yeah, you don't want that as your first name. Yeah. But yeah, they go to the sunken city, and 
there's like a whole underground lab and shit. It's like something out of Portal. Like it's just it's a whole thing. But it, again, it looks nice because it's drawn by Del Mundo. Um, Armando. Armando Del Mundo. Yep. Uh, while they're underwater, <laughs> Scalp or not Scalp Hunter, I keep calling him that. <laughs> Bloody Lip shows up. A lot of names. He shows up because uh, another cool thing about Bloody Lips is that when he ate part of Scalp Hunter, he got access to Scalp Hunter's spaceship. Oh. I think it's, what is it called? The Trash Heap or something? But it's like a hastily put together ship made out of like scraps and, and stuff. Oh. Like junk. And he's able to control it because he's got Scalp Hunter's memories in there. It's funny that he eats part of Bullseye and gets all the memories about, like, killing people and doing important shit. But when he eats Scalp Hunter, he's like, oh, I guess there's nothing relevant in that guy's life, so I'm good. <laughs> and again, he's trying to kill her so that he can get to Cape Crow. But part of him wants to kill her because he's got Bullseye's memories in his head now. So he's like, oh, Electra, I hate you for some reason. <laughs> because we learn this later from Bullseye. Because Bullseye killed Elektra and she came back to life, Bullseye's really mad about that. Because he's a serial killer, and he's like, Fucking pissed. No, I killed you. It's like when you're a kid, like, no, I killed you. Yeah. You're dead. And you're like, no, I have a healing power. Yeah, so I'm not dead. What is uh, Elektra's like, power? Like, if Bloody Lips ate some of her, what does he receive? Does he... She's just a good assassin. She doesn't really have any powers. So she sucks. No kidding. <laughs> she sucks. I mean, I guess he would have the memory of, like, Dying and coming back. He'd be like, I love Daredevil. <laughs> <laughs> so, the both of them... Okay, there's a lot of weird trippy visions in this book as well. They both have... They both almost drown fighting each other. Because Electra gets to a point where she like stabs him through the head and it still doesn't kill him. Oh. So they're underwater, and they're nearly drowning, and they start having these visions. Not like the guy, but like, you know the concept. Yeah, Vision just shows up out of fucking nowhere. Have you seen my wife? <laughs> She's fucking around again. <laughs> she broke the multi first and I keep getting calls from that doctor guy. Um, <laughs> he's but, not uh, happy. He's not happy. <laughs> so, yeah, they're under the end of the sea. And Does Vision having... have a built-in cell phone? He should. It'd be really, it'd be so stupid. If he carried if, a if Vision's phone. walking around he's like, hold on, I gotta answer my phone. You're just there, like, what? You are a phone. What are you doing? <laughs> anyway, so Electra has this vision of her mother, and uh, Bloody Lips has this vision of his family that he killed. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and like the visions, I, th I think they're brought on from Babylon itself because Electra's vision of her mother, the mom is like, you suck. Like, I, I, I hate that I, I. Her mother died during childbirth. And her, the ghost of her mother or whatever is like, I never even wanted you. Your dad was a bastard. He told me I needed to be pregnant to be happy or whatever. And so I had you and then I died for it. And Electra's just underwater like, no, don't say that. <laughs> and then Bloody Lips' family is like, you killed us, you asshole. Like, we loved you and you just one day decided because some snake told you to do it, you killed us. And now you're, look at you. You're used to wearing, like, clothes. Now you're, like, running around in a... A loincloth. You're running around in a loincloth eating Looking people. Like Tarzan, Looking bro. like Tarzan, you idiot. <laughs> and he's like, no, don't say that. You killed us. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah, right? Stop making me feel bad. <laughs> you you killed us. No, but you're making me feel guilty. About <laughs> yeah, yeah, you should. But Electra basically fights through the vision because she's like, you're not my mom because my mom would love me. And then she stabs her own mother. Oh. And then... <laughs> wow. <laughs> If you're my mom, dodge this. Well, dodge. Like, Shit, I like the way you think. <laughs> Kill your parents. Yeah, good job. <laughs> and then, uh, what is it? Bloody Lips is like, hey, wait a minute. I don't regret eating my family. Fuck out of here. <laughs> Get all this guilt bullshit out of the way. I don't think he eats them again, but that would have been really funny if it just cuts back to him eating their ghosts. Or oh, God. There. But uh, Electric gets out of the trance before Bloody Lips does, because he's just fucking floating there, like, ah, my vision's... So they're just having seizures in the water, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, right? It's a miracle they're not dead. So Electra drags uh, Matchmaker and Kento out of the oceans of Babylon or whatever, and Kento's a little bitch who can't hold his breath, so Electra has to do mouth-to-mouth. -mouth. <laughs> Thankfully, they don't, do, they don't do the thing where Kento is like, I love you now. <laughs> I die for you. 
What? Everyone's when it comes to like mouth to mouth, everyone thinks like you're kissing them. You're not. No, like, you're, you're just blowing into their. Exa- you're putting your lips on theirs and blowing. It's, it's actually way more uncomfortable. Yeah, it's, it's like it's if not... you do that to someone while they're conscious, they'd be like, "Stop!" <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's great because Kento is like, "Okay, I think I know the place my dad would go to, like the second most likely place after Babylon where he'd go to." So they get in their ship and they fly off. But Bloody Lips gets out of the water. He's like, I'm not done in this book. Um, when they and, get back uh, to the ship, Electra's like, so, who is that crazy guy with the lion head? And so they look up his profile and there's like nothing about him. <laughs> Just like a name. Um, and then, even though this is the book of Assassins, they get in a cool Star Wars sky battle where they're like using their ships to shoot each other. What? And, and Scalp Hunter, despite looking like... Or not Scalp Hunter. God damn it. <laughs> despite <laughs> Bloody... get together. Despite Bloody Lips looking like, you know... A tribal huntsman of some sort. He's like, I know how to operate this this spacecraft with its crazy guns because I ate that that scalp hunter guy. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Now you said it right. Yeah. So there they get in the sky fight. They're burning. They're crashing. Guardians of the Galaxy comes out uh, the fourteenth. <laughs> yeah. Two thousand fourteen. Yeah. Buy your tickets now. Buy your tickets now. They crash in the coals. They crash in the <laughs> They crash in the Arctic. And wouldn't you know it, that's where they find Cape Crow. Nice. Um, and then I, I didn't buy uh, issue five, so... Fuck! <laughs> so we have to redo this podcast? You just skipped it? I have to go to issue five. I have to go find it. But when you get to issue, I guess, yeah, six... It's like totally fucking different because you <laughs> skipped five. <laughs> well, no, it is. A little oh, bit. Great. I know what happened, so I can explain it. But the art changes. Uh, no, that's okay. It's not the worst. I mean, compared to Demundo's art, it's not as great. What happened to yeah. Demundo? Yeah. Uh, he had other stuff to work on. He comes back. Okay. This isn't it forever now, but basically, when we get back to it, Electra, when she met Cape Crow, she was like, "Well, now I can't kill him because I'm just, and now I have to reunite him with Kento, his son." And basically, what happens is, and you know. They find Cape Crow. Electra doesn't want to kill him. Um, the problem now is that Cape Crow is with them. And so by association, Electra has a hit on her head that's bigger than Cape Crow's. Because the League of Assassins is like... That's a DC thing. The Guild of Assassins, <laughs> trademark, is like... well, if, <laughs> DC's going to listen to this and be fucking bullshit. <laughs> yeah. If, they're like, if Electra can find Cape Crow and is like protecting him, that means that she's a bigger target than Cape Crow would be. So now, it's the four of them, and they're trying to escape the League of... the Guild of Assassins. And we get this little montage as they're, like, traveling back to, like... Because, what is it? Cape Crow has a bunch of secret bases on Earth, and he's got one in, like, the Amazonian jungle or some shit. So they're trying to get there, but they're being hunted by villains, including uh, Whiplash from the Iron Man comics, okay. and Tiger Shark, who's a shark man, and Jack-O-Lantern, who's a rip-off Green Goblin, to name a few. Is um, Tiger Shark also a tiger, or is he just a shark? He's just a shark man. Then why is he so called, called I'm a tiger? Bad. <laughs> was, is he at least like orange and black striped? Yeah. Or? He wears an orange suit over his shark body. Tiger Shark! Tiger Shark! Tiger Shark! <laughs> He's like a street shark. Good friend of the night watching. <laughs> He's in the basement. He's in the character <laughs> basement. Um, there's a point where Lady Bullseye escapes Bloody Lips and is picked up by like some, I guess, assassin contractors who fix her up with like science. Um, oh, I wrote down what other assassins come to get them because I thought it'd be funny. So, Electra fights Blizzard, who's an Iron Man villain. Whiplash, who's an Iron Man villain. Tiger Shark, who I think might be a Namor villain. Uh, Jack O' Lantern, who's a, again, rip-off Green Goblin character. Um, Crossbones, who's in the Marvel movies as well. Yeah. Uh, Boomerang, who's just Marvel's Boomerang character, not to be confused with DC's Boomerang character. They, and they also... There's two characters named Boomerang? Yeah. yeah. And they're yeah. both Australian, and they both they wear both blue and white costumes. Suck. And they both kind of suck. <laughs> Pretty good. Um, also, Shocker tries to go after her. You remember Shocker? Oh my god, He was in yeah. the She-Hulk book. Yeah. He's like, I knew something was taken from me, and everyone's like, oh, shut wow. up, Shock. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so, yeah, they seek out this safe house in the jungle, in the mighty jungle, where the lion sleeps tonight. Um, <laughs> and while they're trying to get into this base, they're attacked by the Serpent Society, 
which are just a bunch of weird snake people. As serpents are. As serpents <laughs> usually do. You know what's weird? They never connect the serpent society to the serpent that supposedly speaks to bloody lips. It's just a coincidence. Maybe they are them. Maybe oh. they are the people that talk to bloody Whispering lips. Whispering in his ear the yeah. whole time, eat your family. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, they, they fight the, the serpent society. There's this really great bit, because Electra is just like this, she's a killer, right? She doesn't give a shit. This is the part where she's getting wrapped up by one of the snake people. And the snake person's like, Ah, Electra, so beautiful and deadly, but so stupid at the same time. And Electra just bites her nose. Oh, okay. And, she, okay. and she's like bleeding. <laughs> yeah. And uh, who's this other guy? Who's There's this one snake guy who gets like some special treatment. Because they're all beaten up and shit. Oh, right, that's right. Okay. So they escape the Serpent Society. When they get into the... Because, what is it? The crows ran off. Cape Crow and his son, they ran off into the base. Electra and um, Matchmaker go after them, because Matchmaker's also there. But then, oh, Matchmaker is, is stabbed. She can't make any matches anymore, because Lady Bullseye kills her with a sword. No. Yeah, no, it's really embarrassing for... Uh, for it's... Uh, Matchmaker was something kind of rich. Does every time Bullseye kills someone, does, do they go, Bullseye? Okay, so not Lady Bullseye... But in the 2003 Daredevil movie, where Bullseye was played by Colin Farrell, really? the penguin, uh, every time he kills somebody, he goes, ah, Bullseye. Because he's really happy you asked him that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you're right, yeah, I love that it's moment. just like another one of fucking, another useless. <laughs> bullseye. Well, that's good, because he has a Bullseye tattoo on his head. Does he character? Funny. Yeah, Colin Farrell in that movie. Oh. So... Lady Bullseye shows back up, and she's got some weird shadow powers now. Okay. Who? The, Lady Bullseye. The La one, Lady who? Lady Bullseye. Bullseye. <laughs> <laughs> she shows up. She's got shadow powers, you said? Yeah, she's like a fucking Mortal Kombat character now. When when the science... When the science... Serpents? <laughs> no, not the serpents. When she was picked up by like her contractors or whatever, they did science on her to give her powers, and they gave her these smoky shadow powers. Well, thanks for making her cooler, guys. Yeah, <laughs> now she can totally kick Electra's ass, except no. <laughs> uh, except you thought, bitch. Yeah, you thought. Well, it's great because Electra's like, okay, whatever, I'll just kill you again. Try, <laughs> tries to cut her, it goes through her because she's made out of gas now or whatever. And Electra's getting her, like, stabbed by Lady Bullseye. And she tries to stab at Lady Bullseye. Bullseye's like, haha, I turned into smoke or whatever. And then Electra's just like, just sucks her in because she's air now. And then when Lady Bullseye becomes solid again, part of her face is missing. Oh, my God. Whoa. Yeah. So she's like, no, my beauty. And then Electra's like, stab. <laughs> so, yeah, they they have to bury Matchmaker and only they're sad about it because we don't know who the fuck she is. Um, Electra, Kento, and uh, uh, Cape Crow, they're like, what are we going to do, Electra? They're just going to keep sending the freaks after us. And Electra's like, we're going to take the fight to them. I hate when fucking people say that. We're going to take the fight to I them. I hate it. It's like, why? Because <laughs> they're sick of running. Like, you have the one up if you go to somewhere you, where you're familiar with. They're, they, they're like, no. Bennett, wherever they go, they're just going to send die. more... They're going to send more C-list Spider-Man villains after them or some shit. Like, they need to get this done now. Electra's like, it's issue eight. We have no time for this. You know, you never see, like, superheroes, like, stop for dinner first. <laughs> they can't! It's non-stop like, electric time. If they have, like, a massive fight, they're never like, oh, I have a, I'm behind cover, I need a sip of water. <laughs> you never see that. There's that moment, this is not a superhero thing, there's that moment in that one Transformers movie where Mark Whoa, Wahlberg... They're, they're, they're superheroes. Where Mark Wahlberg is, like, running through some bullshit... And there's a car crashes, and like a Bud Light truck gets like tipped over. And he drinks the fucking yeah, Bud after Light. Yeah, the fight, yeah. Mark Wahlberg is like, Duh, takes the Bud Light. <laughs> and you're like, oh yeah. This we is don't Michael, see. This is a Michael Bay movie, I and forgot. I just... <laughs> Shia LaBeouf Transformers movies are better than Mark Wahlberg. Well, Mark Wahlberg, Mark agree. Wahlberg is better than Shia LaBeouf. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> there, I <I'll> say it. <laughs> I didn't like Holes. There, I said it. Oh, okay. You know what? I think Shia LaBeouf is... I think I like more Shia LaBeouf stuff than Mark Wahlberg, actually, I, now that I think about it. I think I just find Mark... The only thing I liked Mark in was Ted. And everyone hated <laughs> oh, yeah. Ted. I like Ted. I like the I like, other guys. You ever see the other guys? No, I haven't. Oh, that was like, funny. Him and Will Ferrell. Yeah. I like the... Uh, I like both of them. I like Will, so... Probably... And he's in that movie Stepdad or something? Yes, with uh, Will Ferrell. Stepdaddy. I never watched those, yeah. Or, uh... 
come what the fuck what is it Daddy's come, Home Daddy's Home Daddy's Home yeah and then they have that sequel where Mel Gibson is one of their dads yeah and that what weird fucking fuck? nerdy guy that no one likes Nick Swartzen yeah he's funny though he's funny he's a funny guy <laughs> the weird fuck? we should do a Transformers fucking all of them yeah <laughs> commentaries on each one of them yeah. Okay. On one sitting, too. Just the Shia LaBeouf ones. Fuck you, Mark. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but the Mark Wahlberg one is where that comedian T.J. Miller dies. Yeah, but Megan Fox isn't in there, so, I mean, you know. Megan Fox looks like... She's she... not in the third one, though. No, she's not. She left. She's okay, left. we'll just do the first two, then. But in, in the yeah. second one, she's barely there, because oh, Sam cool. hooks up with that one fucking robot. Can we do bitch. Bumblebee? That Fuck Bumblebee and everything it stands for. John Cena's in Bumblebee. <laughs> I forgot John, John Cena. Cena. <laughs> Shit, you can't see John Cena? You can't see... <laughs> Where's Bumblebee? Dude, John Cena does the most random fucking projects ever. <laughs> uh, speaking of John Cena, we go to New Orleans. You're gonna have to cut that whole part out. I'm not. No, you're not. <laughs> no, it's <was laughs> funny enough. I'm gonna keep okay. it. <laughs> I, have, I have rules. So, <laughs> so Electra is like, we're gonna take the fight to them. <laughs> She puts on some Cape Crow armor, a, a string of grenades, and like a big sword. Like she armors so up. So she carries grenades, but not guns? No. I mean, she's probably used guns, but you know, stabby stab stab. I feel like guns always win. Guns always <laughs> win, Electra. Yeah. Bullseye. <laughs> Bullseye. It's funny because like, cause Bullseye, he'll use a gun, like whatever, but he likes the the finesse of using random shit. He'll, he'll kill you with a paperclip because he thinks it'll be cool. That is kind of cool. It's kind of yeah. fucking cool, yeah. No, I think he killed someone with a tooth. Like, he was, like, constrained, and so he, like, physically took a tooth out of his mouth and, like, flipped it out. And just did Yeah, just pulled his eye. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> he should be in Fortnite. Yeah, he has to go see a dentist. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he can only do that, like, what, 25 times? Yeah. 24 times? <laughs> he has to get dentures. Yeah. <laughs> he might have fake teeth. Why have your teeth, Mr. Bullseye? He does have adamantium, like, splints on his bones. Because oh. Daredevil threw him out of a building once. Okay. <laughs> Which I would too if you killed my girlfriend. Like, fair. Yeah, fair enough. I think Dare Bullseye did that twice. Bullseye killed two of Daredevil's girlfriends. What a fucking... He's just Imagine jealous. this guy. Who do you think you are <laughs> killing my girls? What Wait, are you doing? Ask that question again. Bar. Who do you think you are? Bullseye. <laughs> oh my god, you're right. <laughs> got he got him. me. I got him. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. We're in New, Orle New Orleans now. ba down 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 Um... Because I guess that's where the Guild of Assassins live. It's funny because I've heard of the Guild of Thieves. Because Gambit is always talking about the Guild of Thieves. But there's also the Guild of Assassins. And they have like a weird Romeo and Juliet thing. Because before Gambit was an X-Men, he was like, he was with the, 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 the Guild of Thieves. And he fell in love with a woman from the Guild of, of Assassins. I mean, New Orleans got a lot, a lot of shit going on. They got a lot going on, and yet only Gambit is the relevant thing to come out of New Orleans. That... To get to New Orleans and like find the Assassin's Guild or whatever, they, they take one of the Serpent Society guys as a hostage. They take Sidewinder, and they, they broke Sidewinder's jaw, and he's this red sneak guy right here. They broke his jaw, so when he talked, he talked like this the whole time. Oh, God. Like they write it so it's kind of like said that way. He's like, Lecture, you broke you broke I jaw. Because <laughs> I think she tells him to talk, and he's like, I fucking can't talk. Like, you know, like, skip a page, you're going to think this guy is a fucking speech impediment? No. <laughs> they go to New Orleans, and they're immediately... There's like a festival going on, and they're immediately accosted by the Reveler. Is, there, is that the Reveler? Always... This guy. He looks goofy. Yeah, he's supposed to be like a, a jester. Of, again, sense. Electra has to fight all these goddamn assassins again. Like Tiger Shark, and uh, Whiplash. Seems kind of repetitive. I know. You'd think after beating them the first time, they'd be done. But, like, you know, Whiplash shows up and he's like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doing the thing from Iron Man 2. That's my favorite thing to do. Um, it, could be easy. it could be a dance move. It could. <laughs> the whip. I want my bird. Yeah, that's... I want my bird. How did we not make these jokes when he first showed up? Right. Electra, I want my bird. Fucking... I don't even forget about that shit. Take your shoes. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, here's the reveler. He's just in a white bodysuit with, like, a clown mask. Huh. Yeah. He's like, he, he takes Sidewinder so that Sidewinder is safe. And he's like, I'll protect you, mon ami. And then, uh, because <laughs> they're in New Orleans. And, uh, I think this guy's the Schmelter or something. The Smelter. The Shit Melter? <laughs> or, like, the Heater. No, the Melter. Because he's, he's a shitty Iron Man villain. He's called the Melter. And I feel he's, like Iron Man has a lot of shitty villains. And a really, and a lot of good movies for some reason. <laughs> doesn't, uh, doesn't match up. So, like, Sidewinder and the Reveler 
they get into, like, a tower with Melter. And Melter's got, like, guns from the tower trained on Electra. But Electra grabs her own gun. Haha, -ha, she uses a gun now. Um, basically gets to the defenses, captures Sidewinder again. And then when Sidewinder finally gives her the information she needs about where, like, the leader of the um, Guild of Assassins is, like, he's like, please don't kill me. And then he opens his eyes and she's gone. Oh, oh. And then he goes, oh, thank God. <laughs> but their journey's not over yet, because they got two other places to go. And issue eight is where the art comes back. Del Mundo got done with his, you know, his, his, his golfing tournament and comes back. Um, but Electra breaks... Del Mundo got done with his name change. Yeah. <laughs> now that I'm Armando Del Mundo, <laughs> I can finish this book properly. I want my credits uh, correctly changed. Thank yeah. you. Um, in issue eight, it's a much better name. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Armando Del Mundo. Uh, um, so she breaks into this uh, shield base because shield just has so many bases, and they're just ripe for the breaking into. Um, How are they so fucking bad on security? It's not that they're bad; it's that Electra's really good. Yeah, well, I feel like in anything they always get fucked. <laughs> it's because they always have things that people want. Yeah, it's like. If they have these important things, how do they not have fucking... Security? Amazing security. They might as well... Like, there's enough superheroes to where you could be like, okay, Falcon, I need you to watch this shield base, exactly. like, three days out of the week or something. Yeah. Something. Three, you just said there's so many. You're making one dude watch it for three <laughs> fucking days out of the seven. Well, I would, like... They can swap every fucking, like, well, think about four the, hours. Think about the commute. It's true. He does have wings. How many, how many, how many superheroes can just fly? That's a lot. You know true. what I mean? Just I fly alone. There's gotta be a few that can teleport. I yeah. don't know. Yeah. Okay. Be before bing, bing, I'm already there. My <laughs> ship's over. Bing, bing, I'm out. It's true. If if they work things out with the X Men well enough, they could just be like, okay, oh, Quicksilver, yeah. Nightcrawler, yeah. like enough fast teleporting. Yeah. How people. do the fucking exactly? Multiple you man. Make one dude watch Multiple man. Three day. Multiple man can own that place. Multiple man can watch. Like, I'll get on a plane. It's like what? What? <laughs> yeah. Someone will do something extra. Deadpool will break into the base as if he's not working there. <laughs> oh, I forgot I work here. I'm sorry about all the guys I killed. <laughs> anyway, um, so Electra ba breaks into this base because she needs she needs more information, guys. And the only person she can get it from is Bullseye. Bullseye. You're going to say Deadpool. Well, no, not Deadpool. Uh, Daredevil. <laughs> Daredevil. Ah, my lover. Where is Daredevil in all this, by the way? He doesn't make a physical appearance, but there's a lot of moments where Electra is thinking about her past with him. He's just like, having yeah, watching yeah, the news. So she she's kind of like she's like avoiding going to see him because she knows that if she does, she might not want to leave again. Yeah, and she doesn't know if she is kind of worthy of being in love with somebody. Like that's part of the emotional crux of this book is that Electra is trying to do the right thing for Kento by reuniting him with his dad, and like it's like through this journey, she's realizing, oh, I can't just escape my trauma by doing like more killing and shit that I was doing before. I need to move on and do something like, like good, you know? So she breaks into this base. Uh, she doesn't kill anyone, which is a step for her. She uses, like, a paintball gun. And they're like, she's shooting some paintballs? What the fuck? And uh, <laughs> she finds, I don't know why only in this book, S.H.I.E.L.D. has such weird, like, stuff. Because, again, they kept Bullseye in, like, a sarcophagus in the, the swamp base. In this canyon base, he's, like, in a floating cocoon <laughs> surrounded by, like, orbs that, like, monitor him. And it's like, where are they getting this shit? It's like Prometheus technology. Just what get is the this? orbs to watch S.H.I.E.L.D. Just put him in jail, for fuck's sake. <laughs> like, so they have him in this cocoon, and Electra, like, tries to break it open, which sets off its alarm system and, like, shoots the pod into the air. <laughs> he's going to the moon, folks. <laughs> he's going to the moon. So Electra straps on a jetpack she stole from one of the S.H.I.E.L.D. agents. Because they have jetpacks. Relax. Um, <laughs> and she's like... Oh, it's funny because Electra's like... She goes up there. She uses a special gun to like break the jet systems to the pod. A special gun. And then the pod's falling. And then Electra's narration is like... Um, what is it? I expect Bullseye's, Bullseye's containment capsule to have some sort of uh, failsafe to keep him from falling. Like repulsors or a parachute or something. He and then doesn't. And then the pod just falls. And she's like, I am mistaken. He plummets towards the earth. I am mistaken. I am mistaken. I Who wrote wrong. this a fucking... <laughs> That's a lecture, dude. So, the pod is caught by this, like, big robot. 
and it's being operated by Maria Hill, who's played... <laughs> yeah, she's played by, like, Colby Smulders in, uh, in the Avengers movies. Maria Hill's in a robot, picks up Bullseye, and she's like, Elektra, y- you can't have Bullseye. He belongs to us now. He's our prisoner. And Elektra's like, I don't have time to talk to you or work with you or anything, so I'm going to fight you and all these robots, and I'll fight all of S.H.I.E.L.D., and then the hand shows up. And they're like... In the sky, just like, ah, ninjas. Oh, it's the ninjas again! Yeah, the goddamn ninjas. They're back. Yeah, because this late in the book, we're still introducing new characters. They look cool. They do look pretty cool. I like, I like ninjas. Because, like, you have all the red grunt ninjas. The white ninja is, like, in second... Uh, what was it? Like, second... In command? Command, thank you. And then the black ninja's in the charge. He's, he's in charge of this unit. And he shows up. And I like, like the red ones. <laughs> <laughs> so the ninjas show up, and they're like, we want Bullseye too, And everyone's like... Why are you guys here? Yeah, Marie Hill is like, I don't get paid enough for <laughs> fucking ninjas. Robots versus the hand. Robots versus ninjas. That's cool. Love it. I'll watch that. The, how how crazier can this get? Um, boy, how do I explain this? They have a dragon. The hand has a dragon that they summon. A ninja dragon! A ninja dragon. Name. I don't think they named the dragon. God That's damn it. Can we though. name it? Can we name yeah, it? Yeah, we want to name it. Drar... Drargama? <laughs> Dragon? <laughs> Tom? <laughs> Tom. <laughs> yeah, okay. Tom. They're like... Does he talk? Yeah. Fucking later. Why? Later the dragon talks. Why? <laughs> why can't dragons talk? Because they're dragons. Because they're second class citizens? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it's 2022, Bennett. Dragons can talk. I'm sorry. <laughs> this dragon has a family and kids and shit. You don't know. Anyway, this dragon shows up. Electra's like, that's a goddamn dragon. Uh, <laughs> the hand are like... Your bullseye, our bullseye. <laughs> so they take bullseye, eh, and they take bullseye. <laughs> their dragon, and they go the fuck home. Okay. And Electra's okay. like, "What do I? What? What? Do I, they have a dragon. What am I supposed to do now? I'm just a lady." So she finds where did a they get, dragon. Where did they get a dragon? Yeah. You know, this one fine. They over here breeding dragons. <laughs> you know, this like Jurassic the World shit, where'd Jurassic where'd Park the dragon. You know, the zoo or some shit. I don't know. <laughs> Electra finds like the robot body that Maria Hill was inside of, and you know, digs it up. And Maria Hill was like, "They have a dragon." And then Electra's like, "I know, they got a dragon." So Tom, <laughs> that, that was Tom. Tom the Beast Boy dragon. So they go to okay. Th- this is I, I, my favorite part about doing this is all the loaded statements I have to say. They go to uh, Florida, okay. and the Everglades of Florida is the nexus of all reality, uh, which is... The like what the good, fuck is that? Yeah, I feel like it's a good spot. Yeah, yeah no, it's yeah. a swamp. I mean, 90% of Florida is a fucking swamp. Yep. And, and there's, a, there's a Marvel character named Man-Thing, who is like... Wow, the, they, they're just running the <laughs> names. They have milked everything fucking dry. What was that name? Scalp Hunter? Scalp Hunter. Man-Thing? Bloody Thing. Okay, but Man-Thing's from like the 70s, okay, so but like... that's a penis. <laughs> Right? They called. They just named him Penis. Paul, all things that know fear, fear the man things touch. Yeah, man things a dick. If so he, he rapes people. No, no. <laughs> I want to. He's I don't a rapist. Get, listen, I don't wanna, <laughs> he's a rapist. I don't he's a man, sex offender. I don't want to get man thing canceled. <laughs> I don't want to get him. Booted he's from the seventies, huh? So it was normal then. <laughs> I don't want to get booted off of Twitter or anything <laughs> like that. Okay, listen. Man, fuck you, man. <laughs> he's not even in this book. But his thing is that if you're afraid of him. He can... He'll touch you. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, man. No, no, listen, listen. He'll touch you. He just proved it. He'll touch you, and if you if you are afraid of him, his touch will burn your skin. I'm afraid of a sex <laughs> I'm a sex <laughs> fucking, yeah, sex fucking burn. Name man thing. <laughs> so, he's not here for this. Anyway, Electra and Maria Hill go to this woman in the Nexus of All Realities named Jennifer Kale, who I think is a man thing character. Um... Does he have his own comic? He does, sometimes. Oh, wow. The last comic he had was written by... I'll R- see you on that episode. <laughs> the last comic he had was written by R.L. Stein, the guy that wrote all the Goose books. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, it was terrible. Oh, my God. Jeffrey Epstein did get a documentary. <laughs> 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 oh, my God. So they go to Florida, where the nexus of all realities is. And, um... Okay, so in order to find... Because they have to... Yeah, try, how do we find the hand? We track down the dragon. How do we find the dragon? Jennifer What's in the fucking sky. It's a dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Jennifer use a fucking satellite. I don't know. <laughs> Jennifer opens this box and takes out a dragon heart, and she's like, "Eat this heart." Oh. 
And I like See, that's just, not what I was thinking, to <laughs> locate a fucking dragon. And I was just like... So, like, watch what? the news? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice until this, right now, because I'm looking at it. When she eats the heart... What is that? All the, like, the tubes of the heart make the onomatopoeias. So, like, the word yummy is over here, and it's made by the strings from the heart. And the word chomp is right here as she's biting into the heart. Why? Because that's <laughs> fucking awesome, dude. That art's awesome. Wow. I did not notice Good that. Good for though. Armando. Yeah, and then he does this really cool art piece. Whoa. Again, it's, it's like distinctly different. This is another weird vision trip she has. I want him to like draw the fucking picture of me at my funeral. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> so, she has this other trippy vision. And, uh, what is it? She has this trippy vision. And she sees Daredevil in her vision. Daredevil's just like, dude, just come home to me. Like, we can, we can be heroes in New York. We could settle down halfway across the world. I don't care. Just just come home. He said that to... Electra, Like, in her vision. Holy shit. She, she's, she's probably pretty she, happy about that. Like, <laughs> it's shaped like a heart, too. Like That'd be a cool tattoo. Yeah, yeah. No, it's really cool looking. And I love the use of, like, the white space around it just mm -hmm. to really highlight what's happening in the middle. Mm -hmm. um, but, oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just her having to decide, like, I'm not giving up. I'm not going home. I have to, I have to see the end of this. So she goes on this vision quest and it takes her to where the dragon is, which is also where the hand is. And the hand is doing their weird revival ritual on Bullseye. Of uh -oh. course. Yeah. But Fucking, they're just going to kill everyone off and bring them back just like that. Look, if it works, I mean, it doesn't work, obviously. Electra's here. Uh, so when Electra's there, she finds the dragon. And again, I don't think the dragon has a name, but the dragon is like, the hand treats me like a slave. Like, they enslaved this dragon. So she frees the dragon. Oh. <laughs> okay. Oh, and this is... Oh, hold on. Look at that fucking heart. Dude. Yeah, I know. This This is great, too. Like, there's this bit where they're trying to revive Bullseye, and Electra's just fighting past all these hand ninjas. And the dragon's helping. The dragon's, like, eating the hand ninjas. Uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles were partly inspired by Frank Miller's work on Daredevil. So much to the point where the main villains in Ninja Turtles are the Foot Clan. Because in, a, in Daredevil, it's the Hand Ninja Clan. Can they use the word clan? Well, you know... Uh, <laughs> Not anymore! <laughs> as long as Scalp Hunter exists, they're fine to call their organization whatever they want. Is Man-Thing the leader of the Hand Clan? <laughs> no. He's gotta he's be. He's also a racist Listen, and a child predator. <laughs> Man-Thing is just looming around Florida, helping folk along the way. Touching people. Touching hearts. Oh, yeah. Dragon hearts. Through the anus. I think he used to be a man. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> he's like a swamp monster now. Oh, he's like a, so he's a slimy, so grimy a rapist. So a monster coming towards you, I would be, I'm terrified. Yeah, Saying so he I wants get... to touch people? No, he doesn't. Let me touch you. <laughs> I have to know if you're afraid. <laughs> it's so weird. Like, so they're, she's fighting the ninjas, and the, the black hooded ninja who's in charge, uh, Shibu, Shibui, Shibu, Shibu. Okay. What? What? Sh uh, let me see how you spell this. S H I B O U. Shiboyu. 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 Shit. It's Shiboy. Shiboy. Shiboy takes off his mask, and he he's just Skeletor. He's got like a blue skull face. I don't know what his deal is. He says he's the son of death. Okay. From Reaper Son. Okay. And Electra's like, I don't fucking care what your fucking bone face bullshit is. No one's ever going to care who you are outside I mean, of this. He looks kind of tough. He looks cool. And then Electra uses chains from, like, she took chains from his weapon and then wrapped them around her fist and then punches his dumb skull face. Okay. And then I think he, I think she knocks his jaw off. She oh, so he starts talking like that snake. You knocked my jaw off. What the fuck, man? So she gets on the dragon. She, Tom. I think she takes, she, yeah, she takes Bullseye. What'd you say? Was he he bullseye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because even though Electra gets Bullseye back, Bullseye is fully healed now. Uh oh. Uh oh. But he's putting on a front. He's pretending like he's still. Uh, wait, wait, what'd you say? Bullseye. There you go. I like how every time you say it like that, you gotta touch your forehead. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> he's still acting like he's like comatose from like the neck down. So they can get the jump on them. Oh god. Comatose from the neck. Isn't that just paralyzed? <laughs> yeah, paralyzed. <laughs> Comatose from the neck down. And then, because this book isn't extra enough, when they have Bullseye, they strap him down to a table, they strap Electra down, and the, the crows are going to connect their minds so that Electra can 
learn secrets that are in Bullseye's head. You know, I like this book, but it's fucking weird. <laughs> okay, but this is the final point, kind of. So, final point, kind of. <laughs> Bullseye, Bullseye knows <laughs> who the leader of the Assassin's Guild is right now. Who is he's, he's one of the only person that knows. And to find out, Elektra has to freaking Matrix into his head. Okay. Because it looks like the scene from the Matrix, honestly. <laughs> Where they're both strapped down on a table and they're oh, behind them. And inside Bullseye's head, Bullseye, is just like this <laughs> chaos. Like, look at this. Oh my god. This madness. <laughs> That's in uh, Bullseye's head? or? Bull- yeah. Wow. That's in Bullseye's head. Bullseye. Yeah. And like, in his mind, he has like, because he's, again, he's a serial killer and he's super proud of all of his murders and stuff. In his mind are just all these like statues of all the greatest like d- kills he's gotten. So there's like one dude with a staff through his head. There's one dude with a bunch of like billy sticks through his head. You know, I feel like if I was that creative as a fucking serial killer, I'd probably. I think there's deaths that he didn't even commit that he like dreamed of because there's one of a dude in a Captain America costume with a shield through his head. Oh. So he's got all these things. It's like an art show for all his macabre murders. And in the center of it is one of Electra on a giant sigh. Because he killed her with her own sigh by stabbing her. And, like, in that same pose. And he's got this statue of, like, that happening. And then, like, in his mind, Bullseye is just, like, naked, curled up on the floor, crying in front of that statue. Like you Oh, can that's see... Bullseye there? Yeah, that's him. Oh, that's awkward. Like, yes. throughout all the panels, you see all these A's? Yeah. That's him screaming the whole time. Oh my god. And like, wow. Electra walks up and she's like, shut up, Lester. I said, shut up! And he kicks him in the stomach. I forgot his name is Lester. I know. <laughs> Electra is like, who leaves the Assassin's Guild? And Bull's like, I, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't. Not even that. He's like, I don't know. Just get out of my head. And Electra's way of getting to this is like, this is your favorite one, right? This is your favorite statue where you killed me and everything? She starts carving away at the statue, like breaking it. And Bullseye's like, please, that's my favorite one. <laughs> I haven't killed you, but I love it. <laughs> Just leave my memories alone. Electra is like, I'll kill your memories. And Bulls is like, okay, don't. I'll tell you where the leader is. I'll tell you where, where they are. They're in Jakarta. Mm. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. Jakarta. So Electra wakes up, and they, sure enough, they go to Jakarta. And she's on the streets with, um, with Kento, the kid, while Cape Crow is on his ship with Bullseye, who's, they think he's unconscious. But we all know that he's not, because yep. he's fully healed. When they get there, Electra and Kento are attacked by, like, they kind of look like dolls, but they're actually monkeys. They're monkey assassins. This book is great. <laughs> monkey assassins? Yeah, dude. And they wear Ninjas? Like, well, dragons? They, they wear these, like, porcelain masks and everything. Like, they're super creepy. I've never oh, those seen are disgusting. them. So, they fight the monkeys. Chucky monkeys. As you do. Their leader shows up, and it's just this kid. And, okay, I forgot to mention this, because it it rarely comes up, but Kento has mind powers. That's how he was able to get Electra's mind into Bullseye's mind. So he's like, whatever, I'll just get in this kid's head. And Electra warns him not to, and the kid's mind is so powerful that Kento is just, like, paralyzed. Like, he just, like, falls unconscious. Oh, God. And this kid, this kid is the, the leader. Of the Guild of Assassins, which is, like, why it's weird. Like, Elektra is like, there's no way. This kid's, like, like six. Like, this is, like, impossible. But apparently this kid and her little monkey clan are, like, the most dangerous assassins ever. And then Things Bulls... Yeah, yeah, and then Bullseye shows up. Bullseye's scared of the little kid. Because, <laughs> well, like, Bullseye, you know, we knew he was alive the whole time. He was fine. He beat up Cape Crow and brought him here and then put on his silly costume again. Um... And the thing with Bullseye in this book is that he knew who the guild leader was, or at least where they were, but now that he knows exactly who the guild leader is, he's like, I'm going to kill the guild leader, and then I'll be in charge of the guild, because that's how it works, I guess. And it's funny because it's an Electra book, so of course the villain has to be the person who, like, made his mark by killing her, oh. you know? The hand comes back. Of course. The dragon's back? No, not the dragon. The but, hand. like... Bullseye, because they revived him, the hand are like, I guess he, you know, he's on the pay list now, so I guess we're working with him. <laughs> so Electra's fighting the hand, she's fighting Bullseye. The monkeys. The monkeys. Uh, it's not going well. Does she die? No, she almost does, though. Because, like, Bullseye, like, beats her in a fight. He's, again, he is so incensed by the fact that he killed her and she came back. Like, he's like, that's unfair. 
Like, I beat you, I'm better than you, I, I killed you legit. And then these stupid ninjas brought you back, and now I'm in charge of them. So, I'm gonna do what I did before, and get my kill back. So she, and there's this bit down here, where he's like hitting her, like over and over again. She's just this mess on the floor. And the thing that gets her up is that Bullseye goes up to kill the kid. Because the kid didn't know. The kid is like, okay, Bullseye, you did your job. Like, you're going to get, like, a higher ranking on the guild or something. And Bullseye's like, fuck that. Highest rank. No, no, no. I'm going to be in charge. I'm going to burn this whole shit down my way. You're just some kid. And I think, I think he kills the kid. No. And Electra is, like, motivated to get back up. And she, like, stabs one of the ninja dudes. And... Then, okay, so, she, I don't know when she got this. I guess the Black Ninja was revived or something, because she takes the head of the the Death Ninja, the Black one with the Skeletor face, and uses, because, okay, I swear this is going to be cool when I explain it. That Death Ninja, Shaboy. Shaboy. It's yeah, Shaboy. Absolutely. Um, he, when he fought her the first time, he said, like, I am the son of death. I have the kiss of death. I can kill you with a kiss. And Electra was like, yeah, well, uh, I'm not letting you kiss me without consent. Anyway, stab, stab, bye. <laughs> During this fight, she manages to get Shaboy's head off and then uses the head to kiss Bullseye. So Bullseye doesn't die, but he gets really old. Like Captain America that one time. Oh, God. Yeah, so he gets old. He can't fight anymore. And Bullseye's like, okay, bye. Like, I'm not, I'm not, for some reason, he's like, I'm not going to kill you because I'm, like, old. Like, would it be right if I killed you now? Because... All my henchmen did the work, and I'm not at full. Like, I want to kill you when it's just me, and I'm at my best. So he's going to leave, and he's like, I already won anyway, because, you know, I killed the leader of the Assassin's Guild. When Bullseye and his buds leave, Elektra is just alone with the kid who's, like, dying, and she's about to die. And her last words are, like, like, I, I like, she's dying, and Elektra is like, before you die, give me the guilt. Hmm. And the kid is like, Done. Like, give him hell, basically. And so the kid dies, and Electra's like, good girl. So now, Electra's in charge of the, the uh, Guild of Assassins. What? Yeah. And basically, we don't resolve the thing with Bullseye. Bullseye's just alive somewhere, just kind of old. But Kind of we... old or super fucking old? Super fucking old. I don't know how it gets better, but he does. Uh, anyway, the, the ending of this book is that after this whole ordeal... Electra, Cape Crow, and Kento are in charge of the Guild of Assassins. And there's this bit where a bunch of the, the Serpent Society and Crossbones and Sabretooth and stuff, all the assassins are called out into, like, uh, the, the jungle of Mexico or something. And they're like, I don't get it. Electra called us out here to, like, kill a target, but there's no one else out here but us. Uh-oh. Like, who's the target? And then Electra and the Crows show up, and Electra's like, you, you guys are the target. I'm in charge of the Guild, and I'm destroying it from the inside. And that's how the book ends. It ends with this bit of, like, now that she's at this point where she controls the guilt, she's just going to take it apart herself, like, from the inside out. That is Electra, a book that I think is really, like, again, it's pretty simple. It's just an, a book about an assassin going after this guy, now I'm teaming up with this guy, now people are going after me, now I'm going after this person. Like, it's a lot of, like, we're jumping around a lot, we're going to different locations, we're killing a lot of different people, but one of my favorite things is that, like, it's it's... It's all over the place, and I like the art so much that, like, it didn't matter how irrelevant Electra was to me. It's just, like, the art in this book is so spectacular, I, I needed to read more of it. And again, I, I don't know what they did with him, I don't know if they'll ever do anything with him again, but I think Bloody Lips is, like, a really interesting villain. Because he's scary, but he's also weird and unusual. There's a whole montage of him, like, killing different animals to get their abilities. Like, he kills a shark so he can swim really well. He eats, like, a, a chimp so he can, like, swing on trees really well. Like, in concept, he should be a really powerful character. And I think on the part of Elektra, I think her arc in this is really good as well. Because of just, like, I just want to be an assassin and avoid all my problems at home with Daredevil. And then it's like, shit, this kid just wants his dad. I can relate to that because I had a dad that I, like, you know, lost a while back. Like, you know what I mean? Like... She changes throughout the book, and by the end, she's still doing the assassin thing, but she's doing it, like, against her own, like, guild. And I think that's really cool. Um, Bennett, what did you think of Elektra? 
Well, I liked it. Yeah, it was alright. Yeah. I think it jumped around, had too many fucking characters. But <laughs> I think he keeps like a consistent party of characters. Like once you meet Kento, he's kind of around for a while. Yeah. When you meet Cape Crow, he's kind of around for a while. And you meet Bullsoy. <laughs> when you meet Matchmaker, she's dead in four, more, four other issues. I, I liked it. I yeah. That. Good. Uh, Paul, what did you think? Yeah, it was good. It was a lot, but it was good. <laughs> uh, that's Electra from 2014 and 2015. Woo! Uh, yeah, no, solid art in that book. I think next time around, we're talking about another assassin turned good guy, uh, Damian Wayne uh, Robin. That'll be fun. Uh, thank you for listening. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. And we'll catch you guys in the next episode. Until then, goodbye. Bye-bye.